All right. Good morning, good evening, and good night to all the people around the world. Today's lesson is about mythology and English, and it's aimed at students aged 11 to 14. I'm Teacher Ari, and I'm super excited to meet you today. So everyone, I know English can be kind of fun, maybe kind of boring. It depends how you feel about it. But for today, I want lots of energy from you, please. And let's start with this tongue twister. I'll go slowly and then you go with me. How many yaks could a yak pack pack if a yak pack could pack yaks? Hmm. All right, let's try it together. How many yaks could a yak pack pack if a yak pack could pack yaks? Great, guys. So it sounds to me like you've all got the rhythm. Can I hear you say it once really fast? When I say go, one, two, three, go. people well done so together how many yaks could a yak pack pack if a yak pack could pack yaks cool are you getting it is your tongue twisted all right let me hear it three times really fast all right one two three go You guys are too good. Well done, everyone. So I'm really excited to talk to you today, and I'd like to start with introducing myself. But before I do that, I want to remind you, if I speak too fast, you can slow me down by clicking on the settings icon on your YouTube video and slowing down the video speed. All right. If you get lost for a moment, you can pause the video, go back, listen to it again, anything you want. Very exciting, isn't it? So everybody, I'm Teacher Ari, and I would love for you to introduce yourself to me. What's your name? Hello, Sophia. Hello, Alexander. Hello, Li Shang. Hi everyone, it's so nice to meet you. Thank you for joining me today. And like I told you, we are looking at mythology in English. But first I want to know, where are you from? Hmm. Mm hmm All right, everyone. I'm from South Africa, which is way down here, bottom of Africa, right? And what we're looking at today is storytelling. Now, I love stories. And, you know, I often think about the way we work in languages, in people. We, we live off stories. Think about some of your best memories from when you were very little. Do you remember somebody sitting with you, telling you a story, telling you about your family or your grandma, grandpa, telling you about the past. Well, humans have been telling stories for thousands and thousands of years. And long, long ago, in ancient times, this was how we used to understand the world. We used to tell stories and we call these stories myths. And that brings us to the big word I said just now, mythology. I can hear some of you asking, when was ancient times? Do you know any of these places? These are all artifacts and buildings from ancient times. So have any of you ever been here? Very cool. This is in Southeast Asia, in Cambodia. What about here? Has anyone ever been here? 
You're very right. This is in Italy. If you're joining me today from Italy, ciao. All right. And what about here? Does anyone live in Egypt? You're right. This is the Pyramid of Giza and the Great Sphinx. And they come from ancient times. Now, when we say ancient, we mean incredibly old long, long before we existed, long before even I existed. So today we're looking at stories from ancient Greece. And if you join me this week, each day I'm going to be telling you about stories from a different continent. So we're starting in Europe. Now, where, where was ancient Greece? Not quite the same as modern day Greece. So if you look at the world over here, you see North America, South America, Australia, Africa, and what's this one called? That's right, that's Europe. So Greece is a country in Europe, and a lot of Greece is made up of different islands and lots of territories. In ancient times, hundreds and hundreds of years ago, this was ancient Greece. It was still in Europe, but all of these places in red were outposts of Greece. And the ancient Greeks changed the world as we have it today. They were responsible for a lot of our science, architecture, storytelling. They were pretty cool people. So what we should know about the ancient Greeks, it, about the ancient Greeks, excuse me, is that they had so many gods and goddesses. And some of the most important were Zeus, Hera, Hades, Poseidon, Athena, Demeter, Apollo, Ares, Aphrodite, goddess of love, Hermes, he was pretty cool. He was the god of tricksters, medicine, travel, and packages. Anyone ever heard of Hermes Express, the company that does package delivery? I bet you they were named after him. This guy was pretty cool. Hephaestus. Can I hear you try to say it? Hephaestus. Uh, he was the god of making things and being a craftsperson. He's quite important for today's lesson. And Artemis. So the ancient Greeks built many temples to worship their gods and many of their temples still exist today. We can still go visit them. And these are some pictures from Greece. Okay. So before we look at vocabulary, without telling me, without me telling you, how many ancient Greek gods would you say there were? All right, if you said more than 12, that was good, you're right. Okay, now I'm not going to talk all day. I hope that you have some paper and a pen to write with, and I hope that you're still enthusiastic you want to learn a bit about ancient Greece with me. If anyone has ever read the Percy Jackson books or watched the movies, I think they're pretty cool. And if you haven't, I think you should, you should give them a try. So today's vocabulary is quite straightforward. Let me just make my video a bit smaller for you and move it. There we go. So our first word of the day is mythology. May I hear? Okay, let's break it down a bit. Let's break it into syllables, all right? And we can say mythology. Let's try to clap it up. Mythology. Good job, everyone. One more time. Mythology. 
you are all brilliant. So mythology is a noun. And can you remember what a noun is? Okay, if you said that a noun is a word that tells us the name of something, you are absolutely right. And when we speak about the name of something, we mean things like proper nouns, my name, Ari, your name, Peter, your name, Lucy, right? It tells us about the names of places like Africa, Europe, South Africa, America, Greece, anything like that. It tells us the name of objects like the pen, my very cool eraser, or even my microphone. Mm -hmm. And it also tells us about things like feelings and emotions love, sorrow, laughter, ha 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 ha, anything like that. So nouns tell us the names of things. And what I would love for you to know, that doesn't really fit, does it? All right, let's edit it. Okay. So if nouns tell us the names of things, and mythology is a noun, then mythology is the name for a collection of myths and legends which belong to a specific culture. Now, that makes sense, but I can hear you wondering, what's a myth? Okay, let's look at myths in a moment. Ancient. Remember we spoke about ancient? Ancient is an adjective, and ancient means a very, very, very long time ago, a time that doesn't exist anymore. So what's an adjective? You're right. Adjectives is the name we give to words that tell us about things. They tell us about the noun, like, I have a black dress on. He is a tall boy. She is very short, but has a beautiful smile. This is Lucy, my Lucy. Lucy has blue eyes, pink cheeks, and purple hair. All of these words tell us about the noun. Her dress is purple and shiny. So adjectives tell us about nouns. Now let's put ancient and times together. Ancient, very, very, very old, long in the past. And times, a noun telling us when something's happening. Okay, have you got it? Yeah, you do, well done. So what about myths? Now, if mythology is the name for a collection of stories, a myth is probably one story. Myths are stories from the past which tell us how things came to be. So remember I told you the ancient Greeks were really smart people. And what they did was they came up with lots of different stories about how the world was the way it was, or even why. All around the world, we have different stories about how people got their emotions, or um, in Africa, we have some stories about why the, let me think, why the giraffe has a tall neck. Every cultural group in the world has stories. And today's story is about how the Greeks believed people got their emotions, their nouns, right? So one of the first ones we're looking at is curiosity. Now, can you be curious? Do you know how? Yeah, you can be curious. Have you ever had someone come home from the store or it was your birthday or a special event 
and there was a present for you. And you could see the present. It was wrapped up, it was beautiful. And they said, in this box, there's something for you, but you weren't allowed to open the box. Do you remember that feeling you got? And you thought, I want to know what's in the box. I'm so curious. Well, curiosity is a feeling and a feeling is a noun. If you're curious, you have a strong desire to learn or know something. So you could say, I'm curious about if you're having fun. Are you having fun? Thank you. I, I, I'm also having fun. It's really nice to meet you today. So some of our other words for today are ignore. Can I hear you say it? Ignore. So you need to roll the G. Ignore. Okay, one more time. Good. Ignore is a verb. Can you remember what a verb is? Yes. So a verb is a word that gives us an action. It tells us about something like, I'm nodding my head. I'm shaking my head. I'm eating my hair, right? Verbs. Okay. Without verbs, we can't actually do anything. You are sitting, you are standing, you are listening, I'm talking. What other verbs do you know? Let me hear some. Mm -hmm. Eating, very good. Walking, lovely. Singing, very good. One more. Hmm. I like listening. Very good, everyone. Well done. So other verbs are things like eating, um, num, 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 walking, singing, dancing, listening, right? But if you are ignoring, you are not paying attention to something or you're pretending you didn't hear it, right? Have you ever ignored anyone? You have? That's not very nice. Mm, I've also ignored people. And it wasn't very nice of me. So let's look at our next word. Sneaky. Sneaky. Can I hear it? Okay. So you want to go s n e k e. Sneaky. Very good. So sneaky is also an adjective. And you told me, because you're all smart cookies, that adjectives are words that describe things, people, places, emotions. Now, if someone is sneaky, it means that it's the opposite, the antonym of being honest. It means usually that you're being clever in a way that's, not very nice, it's possibly bad or harmful to other people. Sometimes we could say you have to sneak, and that's a verb, and if you have to sneak, you have to do something very secret so that people don't see or hear you, okay? But to be sneaky is not always a very nice thing. What about being lonely? Now, lonely. Lonely is an adjective and lonely means that you're being sad because you don't have friends or a company, right? I know maybe if you're under quarantine, it can be a bit lonely, but at least we can talk to each other today and at least we know that one day things will get better. Okay. What about mighty? So let me hear it. M I T. Mighty. Very good. Mighty 
is an adjective. And if you're mighty, you do great and impressive power or strength. Right. So it kind of sounded like something out of a cartoon, didn't I? Um, you could hear it in a school sports competition. And you hear, we are the lions, the mighty, mighty lions, right? Have you ever been to a sports competition like that? And you hear that, seen it on TV, right? Mighty means very powerful. Now, in the world of the ancient Greeks, there was one Greek god who was incredibly mighty, and that was Zeus. So today's story is actually a little bit about Zeus. Okay, remember Zeus? All right. So remember everyone, nouns are the names of people, places, objects, and emotions or feelings. Verbs are words that show us action. And adjectives are words that describe nouns. Okay, I've done a lot of speaking now, so it's your turn. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is identify. What does it mean to identify? means to spot okay, the nouns in these sentences. All right, would you read it quietly for yourself? Okay, I'll read it to you. I recently went to Greece to visit the Athena Parthenon. So what are the nouns in that sentence? Hmm. Let me see if I can find my highlight tool for you. All right, the nouns. Hmm, I can see two. You're right if you said Greece and the Athena Parthenon. We saw a picture of the Parthenon a few slides ago. Okay, it's one of the big temples. Great. What about number two? I love to travel. I usually go by aeroplane. Hmm. Can you spot it? Mm -hmm. Aeroplane. Aeroplane. What is an aeroplane? You use it to fly, to travel. Now, why is to travel here? Did you say that was the noun? Okay, I understand. You could say travel is a noun if you speak about people travel, but not really. Travel is a verb, everyone. When you have the word to like that in front of it, you're more likely going to say that's a verb. Okay, let's look at number three. Today, we are studying the mythology of ancient Greece. Now, here you say it. Mm. So remember, mythology. Mythology. One more time. You're all fantastic. Well done. So, what are the nouns? Yeah. Mythology is one, and, and ancient Greece. Very good, well done. Okay, so let's look at our second set of questions. The adjectives in the sentences. What are the adjectives? Adjectives are words that tell us about the noun doing fantastically well today, Sarah. Good job. Okay, so number one, the Athena Parthenon is a massive white building. So we're not looking for the nouns, we're looking for the words that tell us about the noun. Right, if you said massive and white, you are perfect, well done. Right. What about number two? In Egypt, you can visit the Great Pyramids and see how big they are. Hmm. Big. That's perfect. Well done. 
All right. And the last one is number three. The Colosseum is a very popular tourist site. The Colosseum is very popular. Very good. But I see there's a mistake there. The Colosseum is in Rome, not in Greece. Okay. My mistake, everyone. All right. Let's look at our next page. So, I think you were all fantastic. How do you feel about nouns and adjectives? You feel good? I feel good too. I'm glad to know that. So what about the verbs? Now remember, the verbs are the actions. Okay, number one. Today, we are studying ancient Greek myths. Studying, lovely. What about number two? You might be lying on your bed right now or sitting at the dining room table. Hmm. Lying, sitting. Hmm. The dining room table is not quite right because the dining room table is a noun. So what you do at the dining room table is a verb. You have dinner or lunch, but the table is a noun. What about number three? Hermes, remember him? What was his job? That's right. Hermes was responsible for taking messages to and from the gods. Probably to other gods, but sometimes to people. Okay, and the verb? To take. Fantastic, everyone. Good job. Well done. Okay, let us look at the next slide. So the story that we're looking at tells us about Zeus, the king of the gods. Hermes, the messenger of gods, him over here. And Pandora. And this is the story about the first woman on earth and curiosity. Okay, so Zeus, Hermes, Pandora. May I hear you? Zeus, Hermes, Pandora. Very good. Now, you already know that Hermes, there's a company that does deliveries. What about Pandora? Have you ever heard of Pandora? Mm -hmm. Pandora does jewelry. Now, Pandora was believed to be an incredibly beautiful woman. So it's interesting that the name for the jewelry store was named after her. I think it's pretty cool. Okay, so today's story, I'll read, I'd like you to read with me, Today, we're learning about Pandora and her box. All right. Once upon a time, a long time ago, there were two brothers named Epimetheus, Epimetheus and Prometheus. They were good gods. They had good hearts. They were good friends. One day, Prometheus got in trouble with Zeus. Angry over something or other, Zeus had declared that man did not deserve fire. He was afraid that humans would become too powerful. But because he had a kind heart and he knew how much man needed fire for food and warmth, Prometheus gave man the secret of fire. Even though Zeus had told all the gods not to do that, Zeus was furious that his order had been ignored. Remember ignored? As punishment, Zeus chained Prometheus to a rock for many years. Seems a bit cruel, but times were different then. But that was not enough punishment, not for Zeus. Once Prometheus was chained to a rock, Zeus went after Prometheus's brother, 
the gentle, kind-hearted Epimetheus. Zeus did not chain Epimetheus to a rock. Zeus had a more sneaky punishment in mind. Okay, let me first tell you, while we're reading the story, I found this story and many other interesting stories about ancient Greece on mrdon.org. So I want to first say thank you to mrdon.org for the credits, and I would love for you to go take a look sometime if you're interested. Okay, so let's check the facts. Why was Zeus angry with Prometheus? Hmm, can you tell me? Yeah, Prometheus told humans how to make fire. And what do you think will happen next? What do you think Zeus's sneaky punishment was? You're right, you might be right there. Okay, William, that's a good idea. So I think that maybe Pandora has something to do with sneak, Zeus's sneaky punishment. Remember how to say sneaky? Sneaky. Very good. Okay, Zeus ordered the god's handyman, the maker of things, Hephaestus, to make Zeus a daughter. Hephaestus made a woman out of clay. A beautiful woman. Remember the adjective? He brought her to life and then brought her to Zeus. And Zeus named his lovely new daughter Pandora. Mm, nothing good can come of this. Zeus knew that Epimetheus was lonely. Remember lonely? To be sad because you don't have friends or company? Mm. Zeus told Epimetheus that his brother, Prometheus, had to be punished, and that's why he was chained to a rock. But he felt sorry that this punishment had left Epimetheus without the company of his brother. That's why Zeus had decided to give Pandora in marriage to Epimetheus. It wasn't the truth, of course, but then Nearly everyone in the ancient Greek world knew better than to believe the mighty Zeus. The mighty, right? Epimetheus was kind-hearted and gentle and thoughtful, but he was no fool. He knew Zeus was up to something, but he loved Pandora at first sight. It's quite sad, isn't it? So what do you think Zeus was planning? Mm -hmm. And did you guess correctly before? That's okay. There wasn't much to tell us if the story was going where it was going. My last question. What do you think up to something means? Yeah, that's another way to say sneaky. If you're up to something, you're doing something sneaky. Okay, so our last chapter of the story. Zeus gave the newlyweds a gift. What are newlyweds? People who just got married. Nice. Let's try you say it. Newlyweds. Yes. Some say it was a jar. Some say it was a box. Whatever it was, it was locked. It came with a note. And the note said, do not open. But attached to the note was a key. It's all very curious. You can guess what happened next. It was Pandora whose curiosity got the better of her. One day, she used the key to open the box. As she raised the lid, out flew all of the bad things in the world today. Envy, sickness, hate, disease. Pandora slammed the lid closed. 
but it was too late. Epimetheus heard her weeping. Weeping is another word for crying. Crying lots of <laughs> right? He came running. Pandora opened the lid to show him it was empty. And quickly, before she could slam the lid shut, one tiny bug flew out. He gave Pandora a big buggy smile in thanks for his freedom and flew away. And that tiny bug was named Hope. And hope made all the difference in the world. So, a few questions, guys. Why was Zeus angry with Prometheus? Had he A, given humans the secret to making brick homes? Mm, that doesn't sound right. B, told humans how to find the homes of the gods. <gasps> mm -mm. Uh, or C, he had given humans the secret to making fire. Mm -hmm. You are correct. It is C. Lovely. Okay, what about number two? Who helped Zeus to make Pandora? Was it A, Hera, B, Epimetheus, or C, Hephaestus? I can't hear you. You're right. C. Nice, everyone. Well done. You were paying attention. Okay, let's look at some more questions. Hmm. Which adjective best describes Pandora? Was she A. Sneaky? B. Curious? Or C. Thoughtful? Very good, she was curious. If you didn't get it, that's okay. You can try again. Let's look at number four. What was the name of the last bug that flew out of Pandora's box? A, beauty. B, love. Or C, hope. Yes, everyone got that one. Hope. Well done, everyone. I think you all deserve stars because you are all superstars. All right. Let's look at some more. Which of the Greek gods are mentioned in this story? Now, this one's a tricky one because there are a lot of names. So pay attention. Was it A, Zeus, Hera, Prometheus, Hades, and Hephaestus. Mm -mm, you're right, Hades wasn't there, neither was Hera. What about number B? Zeus, he was there. Prometheus, mm -hmm. Hephaestus, mm -hmm. and Epimetheus. Yes, you are right. And what about number C? Zeus, Prometheus, Hephaestus, Hermes and Epimetheus. Okay, well, you're actually right if you said number B, okay? But in the video that I'm going to show you just now, you'll see some people say Hermes was part of the story too. So number six is a trick question. This is my one answer. What is the main message? the story. One more time. Perfect. Always have hope. Things will get better. Okay, so I'm going to try to link you to this page. Links down here at the bottom. It's a very cool video that tells you a different version of the story about Pandora and her box. Oh. Okay. And it's going to try and play right now, but I think we're almost out of time. So, some homework, everyone. I would love for you, if you're comfortable, if you want to try, remember you get better by trying. 
to write a short story of your own about how you think hope got into the world. Okay. If you can't write the story, try tell the story. Okay. And number two, you could try to identify the verbs in the next few sentences. And number three, to try to identify the nouns in the next few sentences. Now, if you feel like the video is going too fast, remember you can pause it because on the next page, there are the answers. The verbs are in bold and the nouns are in bold, okay? Before I finish with you today, I want to say, well done. You were all absolutely amazing. I had fun talking to you. I hope you had fun with me. And I want to give thanks to the resources and credits of the materials I was able to find. So the video is from Puddle Jumper Cartoons for Kids. And if you want to take a look at it, it's Classic Tales Season 1, Episode 17. If you want to learn more about mythology, you can look at rickriordan.com. And I want to say a big, big thank you to mrdon.org because the story of Pandora was taken from their website. Thank you, everyone. You were amazing today. If you join me tomorrow, we'll be looking at a myth from another place in the world. Have a beautiful day. Take care of yourself. Wash your hands. Cough into your elbow. And stay inside and be careful. I'll see you soon. High five, everyone. Bye.